As these extreme temperatures move in, frostbite and hypothermia are very real possibilities the more time you spend outside. Here's we explain few things you should know about frostbite, and some tips on how to prevent it from happen. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button, for more updates and upcoming videos. Since frostbite is brought on by freezing, you can't get frostbite if the air temperature, is above 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or 0 degrees Celsius. And frostbite is more common at pretty low temperatures, well below freezing. For example, a temperature of 0 degrees Fahrenheit, and a wind speed of 15 miles per hour, creates a wind chill temperature of minus 19 degrees Fahrenheit. Under these conditions, frostbite can occur in just 30 minutes. During the early stage of frostbite, you'll experience pins and needles, throbbing, or aching in the affected area. Your skin will become cold, numb and white, and you may feel a tingling sensation. This stage of frostbite is known as frostnip, and it often affects people who live or work in cold climates. Get the person into a warm room as soon as possible. Unless absolutely necessary, do not allow the person to walk on frostbitten feet or toes. Walking can increase the damage. Give the person a warm drink, but not alcohol, or caffeine, and wrap a blanket around him or her. Immerse the affected area in warm water, which temperature should be comfortable to the touch for unaffected parts of the body. Or, warm the affected area using body heat. For example, the heat of an armpit can be used to warm frostbitten fingers. Do not rub or massage the affected skin. This can cause more damage. Don't use a heating pad, heat lamp, or the heat of a stove, fireplace, or radiator for warming. Affected areas are numb, and can be easily burned. If the person shows signs of hypothermia, seek emergency treatment immediately. Limit your time spent outdoors in cold, wet, or windy weather. Pay attention to weather forecasts, and wind chill readings. In very cold windy weather, exposed skin can develop frostbite in a matter of minutes. Frostbite most often affects the nose, ears, cheeks, chin, fingers or toes. Dress in loose, light, comfortable layers. Wearing loose, light layers helps trap warm air. The first layer should be made of a synthetic material, which wicks moisture away from your body. The next layer should be insulating. Wool and fleece are good insulators, and hold in more body heat than cotton. The top layer should be windproof and waterproof. A down parka and ski pants, can help keep you dry and warm during outdoor activities. Wear mittens rather than gloves. Mittens provide better protection. Or try a thin pair of glove liners, made of a wicking material, such as polypropylene, under a pair of heavier gloves or mittens. Protect your head. To protect your ears and head, wear a heavy wool, or fleece hat. If you are outside on a bitterly cold day, cover your face with a scarf, or face mask. This warms the air you breathe, and helps prevent frostbite on your nose and face. Wear socks and sock liners that fit well, wick moisture, and provide insulation. You might also try hand and foot warmers. Be sure the foot warmers don't make your boots too tight, restricting blood flow. Recognize the symptoms. In order to detect frostbite early, when it's most treatable, it's important to recognize the symptoms. The first signs of frostbite include redness and a stinging, burning, throbbing or prickling sensation, followed by numbness. If this occurs, head indoors immediately. Plan to protect yourself. When traveling in cold weather, carry emergency supplies and warm clothing, in case you become stranded. If you'll be in remote territory, tell others your route and expected return date. If you would like to get the best outfit for this bitterly cold season, you may follow the links in the top comment for more info.